This morning we're going to talk about holy suffering. And so I want to read the passage that we read earlier from Romans 5, 1 to 4, one more time, just to kind of get these words from Paul into our hearts and into our minds this morning. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we boast also in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And Paul goes on to say, and hope does not disappoint Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And so this passage, you know, we remember Paul, the author of this passage. Paul has a long story and a long history and a long kind of mixed narrative in the New Testament, right? We first meet Paul as Saul when he's part of kind of the persecution system against these people of the new way, against Christians. And then, of course, Saul, Saul has this incredible conversion, and, and, and we have a name change, which so often in the scriptures signifies a significant experience with God. And then, of course, Paul goes on to found churches to be a great leader in the church. But he also goes on to suffer for his faith. And in fact, when Paul writes these words that we've just read to the church in Rome, we have a sense that that he was likely under house arrest and kind of in a prison situation and died as a martyr for his faith. And so Paul was no stranger to suffering, as, as many of us are not as well. And the beautiful thing about Paul's words is though, even though he was no stranger to suffering, Paul is one of the writers that that speaks to us about the hope of God, the hope of Christ, the hope of the reign of Christ that we've been talking about today on this Sunday. And so I wanted to explore this passage in Romans where Paul talks about the roadmap that takes us from suffering all the way to hope. And it makes a stop along the the path of endurance and the path of character. And as I was preparing to think about this sermon, um, I I really was focused early on and kind of thinking about what are going to be the 10 steps. You know, is is anybody else always kind of interested? Of course, 10's a lot. Really, two would be great, right? What are going to be the two or three or 10 steps that lead us from suffering to endurance? And then how do we get from endurance to character? And then finally, what steps can we take to get us from character to hope? And so I was, I was focused on kind of exploring Romans and exploring the New Testament to think about what would be those steps along the road. And what I began to describe, begin to discover was that actually it's, it's a very different journey from suffering to hope that doesn't involve 10 steps. Are you glad? In in fact, it just involves one step today. So I'm just going to leave you with one step in just a moment. And so as I was just thinking about how do we get from suffering to hope, how in our own lives do we get from suffering to hope? So many of us have experienced big suffering and, and, and small suffering that wasn't small to us, but just was the suffering of that happens in kind of everyday life in a million little ways, in a million little disappointments or frustrations or sense of loss. How do we get from suffering to hope? It reminded me as I was was looking into this of a story from my friend Suzanne's life. Who My friend Suzanne had Richard Rohr as her spiritual director several years ago, and she was meeting with Father Rohr, and, and she said, I just wish I knew what God was up to. And he said, well, Suzanne, that's none of your business. And she said, well, no, 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 I, 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 sorry, let me reframe. I don't mean like what God is up to in the universe. I just mean I wish I knew what God was up to, up to in my own life. And he said, right, Suzanne, that's none of your business. You know, so many times in liminal space, we discover that God's work inside of us is unseen. It's a mystery. And the road that he takes us on from suffering to hope is, is, is difficult sometimes to identify. And so I want to tell us about, you know, there's a difference in the spiritual life between change and between transformation. Transformation. 
Change and transformation both have important place in the spiritual life. Change, though, oftentimes is when we take new things on. We sort of white knuckle our way to change. We all know that we've had to make changes in our lives that have been difficult. You know, whether you were trying to, 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 to break a bad habit or whether you were trying to put a new good habit into your life, you had to take something on. You had to work hard. You had to focus on it. Sometimes it was really hard and you did kind of have to white knuckle your way to change. But in the spiritual life, there's also transformation, and the spiritual life is more about transformation than change. And transformation is when we let things fall away, when we embrace what's there, when we allow, when we open up rather than grab a hold of. And so as I was discovering what is it that Paul is telling us how can we discover this roadmap from suffering to hope? I discovered that the words in the passage in Romans that we read, these verbs, suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. Other translations say suffering forms endurance and endurance leads to character and character leads to hope. All of these words that you go between suffering and endurance and character and hope seem to just happen naturally without our involvement, right? Sounds like Paul's telling us suffering just produces endurance. Well, what is there for us to do? Endurance produces character. Well, what are we supposed to do? Do we have a role in that? Character produces hope. Is there anything that we're supposed to, that we're invited to put on or to do? Anything that we're invited to kind of white knuckle our way toward? Are there steps? And what we discover is no. The road from suffering to hope is actually a road of transformation, not a road of change. The one thing we are invited to do is not avoid the suffering. So much of our modern life, especially our modern life of the affluence that we live in in Nashville, Tennessee, and, and, and all that we have, so much of our modern life is aimed at suffering alleviation, right? Or suffering reframing or suffering management. We've got a lot of tricks and tools up our sleeves to avoid suffering, don't we? We've got a lot of well-worn paths to discover of once suffering comes, how do we reframe it? How do we move somewhere quickly away from that? And even the church and the Christian faith kind of brings these to us. Our churches are filled with kind of suffering alleviation tactics, um, I was recently reading Barbara Brown Taylor's Learning to Walk in the Dark. Has anybody read that book? It's really wonderful. Would recommend it to everyone. And so she writes about how, how there's a difference between the sun and the moon, right? The sun rises every morning and it's there and it's bright and it's hopeful and it's light. And it's there and it's the same bigness that it is every day. But the moon... It waxes and it wanes. And it's got this mystery inside of it. It's, there's some nights where we can hardly see it and some nights where it's, where it's large and kind of takes our breath away and some nights where it feels far away and some nights where it feels close. And so she writes in Learning to Walk in the Dark how most of our Christian experience is based on a solar spirituality, right? A spirituality that invites us to, to say it's going to be good, we're going to be okay, there are steps for you to find, to get out of your suffering, God's got good things for you, He's not against you, and all of that's true, right? All of that belongs. But that we miss the lunar spirituality, the spirituality that says there's mystery, there's suffering, there's loss, there's grief, and there aren't easy steps around a lot of that. There are, there are questions. There are questions that sometimes we never find the answer to. 
And we need both. We need the solar spirituality and the lunar spirituality. And this roadmap from suffering to hope invites us into one of the lunar examples of realizing that if we won't avoid the suffering, we will find our way toward hope. So how do, we, how do we not avoid the suffering? How do we become people who are comfortable recognizing, holding space for, letting the suffering have its journey in us? You know, there's, there's kind of a spiritual saying that says, success doesn't have anything to teach us after age 30. Only failure does, right? And many of us, Many of us have, have, have discovered that. You've discovered that if you look at the end of your life back toward other seasons of life and you say, what were the biggest, most important moments or seasons? Many of them involved great loss. Many of them at the time seemed like the worst day that you'd ever had. It was the day you lost the job. It was the day the family fell apart. But with years on the other side of it, we've seen how many times those moments of suffering were the catalyst for new breaking opens, new light to form, new life to form, new growth to emerge. But when we avoid the suffering, when we don't let it have its journey in us, that's where we take out a critical ingredient in the gospel story. You know, the gospel story is one that teaches us that the life of faith is living, dying, and rising, living, dying, and rising, living, dying, and rising all the way home. And when we take out the dying or we move past the dying or we don't let the dying have its journey in us, teach us what it has to teach us, when we can't sit in that mystery and that grace, we also miss the rising. And then we miss the living. And then we miss the rising. And then we miss the dying and the living. And we get that whole gospel invitation that Jesus, our great Savior, who we celebrate today, taught us was going to be the pattern of life. Everything in the gospel contains its opposite. Death leads to life. Suffering leads to hope. Weeping leads to joy. Sowing leads to reaping. And it's going to take our whole lifetimes to find a way to learn how to boast in our sufferings. But this is our work to do. We don't have to white knuckle our way to endurance and character and hope. Isn't that good news? We don't have to figure out what are we supposed to do to build hope. You know, Paul tells us in another passage, another letter that he wrote to the church in Corinth, that hope is one of the great three things. One of the things, one of the things that never goes away. One of the things that endures all the way to the end. So it's going to take a lifetime of work to figure out how we can sit with suffering long enough, embrace the hidden grace inside of suffering, to allow God in His unseen work through the power and the beauty of the Holy Spirit to produce endurance in us and character in us and finally hope in us. Because if suffering isn't welcome at our tables, then neither is hope. You can't have one without the other. There is no hope without suffering. There is no hope without endurance. And there is no hope without character. And so our invitation today is not to a 10-step method. Not to remember the seven principles of. Our invitation is to open up to suffering. To make space for it in our lives. To stop the madness of trying to push it all neatly in a drawer to be dealt with tomorrow to allow suffering. And if we will do this, we will find the road to hope and it will be God who takes us there. Pray with me. Father, thank you for these beautiful words of Paul that are words of mystery and words of grace. 
that begin to point us to the journey from the suffering that we experience every day in a thousand little ways. And for some of us in big moments of dramatic loss and grief and suffering, thank you for giving us some insight into how we can find our way through, not around, not over, not under, not beside, but through the suffering to something beautiful, something that never goes away, something that remains hope. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would give us the power and the grace to sit in our suffering long enough for you to do your hidden, unseen work in us. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.